So welcome CTO team and channel friends. I'm with Okamura Sensei here. And this is the second video we're doing. Now, you know, we guys, we are 3D wiring experts. Uh, Okamura Sensei is the father of 3D wiring, both for Scopic and Ivis Guide. And I've been doing it for several years now with quite good success. But what about the CTO interventionists who's never heard of 3D wiring? If they've never heard of it, what tips can we offer them uh, as experts, having done a lot of 3D wiring, what tips we can gain from 3D wiring can we offer to these people? So I'm going to start with you and ask what tips you have wow. for them. Yes, the important point is a, a target. The target is a distal target. So that's why if you perform the wiring, you have to stop uh, once, one centimeter, centimeter before the distal target exit. Then you should use a torca because a torca is very important to go to the guide wire accurately to the target and also the puppet directions uh, at each coronary site. And also you can use, you, you should use the nine, 90 degrees apart angles. It's very important uh, to see the target very clearly to do the 3D wiring. Ah, so I'm going to explain a little bit. So we should stop when we get to about 10 millimeters before the distal target. And we need to get angles. And uh, Okumura Sensei has done the research to show us the angles. And uh, for the mid-right coronary, this, this is the LAO and RAO view, and ideally 45 LAO, 45 RAO. For the mid-LAD, distal LAD, is the LAO cranial, RAO cranial, at least 45 degrees LAO, 45 degrees RAO. For distal RCA and PLVPDA bifurcation distal caps, then you need LAO cranial and LAO caudal, but at least 45 degrees caudal, at least 45 degrees cranial. Uh, so these will be the ideal views. Uh, in Okamura Sensei's textbook, you have all the views listed for you and you can refer to that as a reference. But these already account for most of the CTOs because they occur in the RCA, in the LAD, where the distal caps are. And that's where we, our interest is in. So when we go to this, we need to take an angle of the retrograde so we can see where the distal cap is in these angles. And then we're ready for our wiring. And even if you don't do 3D wiring, if you use these larger angles for these segments of the coronary arteries, you'll find your success rate goes up tremendously. So the other thing we should do is we should identify where the wire is further away from the target. So from the two views you have, one view the wire is going to be further away, the other nearer. And we should always start wiring from the farther view. And the first thing we want to do is to turn the wire towards the target. Now, you guys are all familiar with this. I think anybody who's done even one CTO have tried to turn the wire tip towards the target, and that's what we should do. But another tip is we should turn the wire in the view where the wire is furthest from the target. And then we go to the opposite view. And here, we again turn the wire towards the target. But here, another very useful thing to learn is that we don't need to turn very much. The reason is, from our 3D work that we did yesterday, we realized that in the second view, the maximum amount we need to turn is 44 degrees. So it's only eight minutes on the clock. It's a very small amount of angle. Usually 10, 20 degrees is enough. So we should never turn too much. I'm sure many of you have had the same experience as me. You're doing a CTO, you turn the wire towards the target, you go to the other view and you turn the wire, you come back to the first view and the wire is in the complete wrong direction. That's because we've turned too much. And the mistake is always to turn too much in the second view. So one little very useful tip is, in the second view, always turn very little. That's important. So uh, when we get the wire uh, pointing towards the target, which view should we wire in? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Because uh, if you see from this view, it is very difficult to control the guide wire. The tip direction is not uh, clearly. Because uh, if the guide wire tip is going to here, it's OK. But the guide wire tip is going here, but you can't understand from this view. So that's why the further, further view is a very important to get a target like this. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, so we should always wire in the view where the wire looks the worst position, furthest away. I know it's very encouraging. If the wire is near, you think, I'm very near. Let's wire in the view It's very near. It's very encouraging. But that's an overlap view. And usually it's wrong. So we should always wire in the view where the wire looks the worst, furthest away from the target. And uh, that another two tips, one is that if your wire goes too near side to the target, so instead of hitting, let's say, the 
my hand is the target, instead of hitting the target here, we go too near. The simplest maneuver to overcome this problem is to pull the wire back more. Not to rotate, but pull the wire back more. Because with more distance, it will have time to cross and hit the target. On the other hand, if the wire goes past the target, the best solution is just to pull back the wire until it's near the tip and rotate 180 80 degrees so the wire points to the tip. These two little tricks is going to help you a lot in your wiring. And finally, I think one other tip is that we need to understand tough distal cap. There are certain anatomies that predict a tough distal cap. And I've published this in the heart lung circulation paper with uh, the APCO group. Uh, the Eiffel Tower, the very sharp cap, that's almost always tough. The distal cap with a big side branch, almost always tough. The blunt rounded distal cap, almost always tough. And the calcified cap that you can see calcium is almost tough. When you get to this, you really need a high penetration force wire to penetrate it. But talking about this, we'll ask the master really the most important question. What wire should we use when we are penetrating the distal cap using 3D wiring techniques? Uh, yeah, for 3D wiring, a high penetration force, uh, such as a compress threads uh, from Asahi company, or sometimes a Gaia neck third or fourth, because uh, High penetration force is very needed because the direct guide wire tip right this way, then uh, penetrate it. So if the deflection is uh, much uh, yeah, occurred, so it is very difficult to penetrate the target. So that's why high penetration force and also the rigid uh, tip area is uh, very important to penetrate the target accurately to the target, mm. conquest, or sometimes Gaia third or force. Mm. Excellent. I mean, I think that's what we've learned, is that actually you do need the penetration force for the distal cap. Uh, we shouldn't shy away from the penetration force in the distal cap. So let me summarize for us what we've learned. So first, we should stop wiring when we get to 10 millimeters within the distal cap. That's tip number one. Tip number two, we should then put a torker on the wire and also go to 90 degrees apart for oscopic views, depending on the coronary segment, the correct corresponding fluoroscopic views, okay? Uh, and then we should do a retrograde injection to see where the distal cap is clearly. Number three, we should go to the view where the wire is furthest away and point the wire tip towards the target. Number four, when we wire from the other view, we should only turn the wire a very small degree. Number five, when you try to penetrate the distal cap, we should go to the view where the wire looks worse, it's further away from the target. Number six, if we miss the target on the near side, we should pull back further as a technique to overcome this problem. Number seven, if we wire past, we should pull back and rotate 190 degrees, 180 degrees and pull forward again. And number eight, we should recognize the difficult, tough proximal cap patterns. And number nine, I think is that we should use a high penetration force wire for our distal cap penetration. Do you think that's a fair comment? Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. These eight uh, steps are very important. If you start the 3D wiring, you should remember uh, these eight steps, then start the 3D wiring. So if there are some tips or tricks uh, also uh, about the 3D wiring more deeply, but uh, please remember uh, just eight steps from you. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Okay, so yeah, well, I wish important. you the best of luck in your CT wiring. I hope these tips from a 3D expert can help you improve your simple wiring every day. Best of luck. Bye-bye.